So we've explained each of the ports and how they work. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and do the install. Um, so we're going to start off with the, the solar um, strings, the solar inputs. Here we've got a, a, a single string coming off the roof. Uh, it's always a good idea to test it just before we plug it in and, and start installing with it. So I'm just going to set my multimeter to measuring voltage. My multimeter starts on, on an AC, so we're measuring DC here. So I'm just going to click select to move to measuring DC and it starts off with millivolts. So I'm just going to press range a few times to make it measure in the range. It's, it's around, my string is around 250 volts. That's the range that I'm selected. You want to stick your red probe into the male uh, MC4 plug and you want to stick your black probe into the female and you should be getting a result. There you go, I'm getting 226 negative. That is just a DC symbol, it's not a negative sign. Uh, if I did have to reverse it up, it would show a negative voltage. Um, there we go, there's a negative sign at the bottom. Um, so that's cool. Um, another thing that will tell me if my polarity is incorrect, because there's a power supply on the inverter, when you connect it in and turn on this isolator, it should power up the inverter. If it doesn't, then you could have a polarity issue or your voltage um, collapses because of shading or something like that. A very good additional test to do um, is a PV isolation test. Um, so what I will do there is measure your open circuit voltage, that's always what you start off with, and then leave your black probe connected into um, the female plug, and then connect your red probe onto AC Earth. I've got my AC Earth over here, so you can see there it starts off at a reasonably high voltage because it's discharging the parasitic capacitances on the string, but it does fall down quite quickly. So I usually say about 10 seconds is plenty of time to wait. After 10 seconds, if you're seeing a voltage of less than 30 volts, it tells you that it should be a good string and there's no connections to earth on the positive rail here because I've got my negative probe in the negative, it's, there, it's telling me that there's no connections to earth on my positive. Um, so now if I move my black probe from PV negative to PV positive and put my red probe on, on earth, again went to 60 odd volts, then it dropped very quickly. As soon as I see less than 30 volts, I'm pretty happy that there's no connections to earth. So I'm, I'm very happy with my string. I'm going to remove my multimeter here. Um, place it to one side and insert and connect my MC4s into the inverter. Um, making sure that your isolator is in the off position, you don't want current to flow as you're connecting it. So make sure your isolator is in the off position. I've got an, an isolator here, so what would be safer is to even turn this off, but um, a lot of installations are allowed to go in without this external isolator. And in that case, you would have voltage live and present on the string as you're connecting it. So there's two inputs, two pairs of inputs, should I say, uh, at the bottom of this inverter. Um, negative and positive for uh, MPPT uh, 1 and negative and positive for MPPT 2. Um, but we've only got one string here. If you've got the second string, you would go into that port over there. Now, a good test, what I spoke about earlier, is just turning on the inverter's rotary switch, and you should see power up on the inverter. Um, and that, that, that tells you correct polarity and there's actually power on my string. But there is circumstances, as I said, that even if you're getting voltage and you've got correct polarity, even 300 volts, 400 volts, it might not start up the inverter. And that's nothing wrong with the inverter. That just means you've got shading or uh, performance on your um, solar inputs, say, for example, in the evenings or night. Next one we're going to do, so I'm just going to shut that off again because I'm, I'm very happy that that is correctly installed and that's, that's all fine. Turning this off should shut down the inverter. There, it's done. And the next thing I want to install is the, is the battery power connections. So there's two interfaces between a, a inverter and a battery. And it's, the first one is power and the second one is CAN communications. So I'm just going to test the power ones here. So I'm going to measure the voltages here and the battery is currently off. I'm going to need to bring my multimeter back into the position so we can all see it, not just myself. There we go, and we're still measuring DC here, and I would say the range 
of, of units is, 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 is fine. We're looking for a, a voltage of about 48 volts, 49 volts, up to 50, 55 volts, depending on what battery you've got on your system. Generally, the battery manufacturers send you a battery that is reasonably close or at least 50% charged so um, there should be a good amount of voltage coming from it. So we've got uh, a positive and negative power lead here and um, if this battery was on and you have to touch positive to negative it would be um, a big spark and, and very unhappy for everybody. So I would always recommend putting it like a when you're doing a test like this a, a, put the lugs at a, a offset to each other so that, that there's no chance even if I trip that the the two lugs will touch each other you desperately do not want them to touch each other so I'm just going to put my red probe into here and my black probe into there I'm getting zero volts and that makes sense because my battery is off so I'm just going to turn on my battery and you would read the user manual for your batteries to work out on how to turn on your battery I would always recommend make sure that it's off um, before you start connecting it into the inverter. I'm happy that it's fallen far enough, so I'm just gonna again remove the multimeter. Left hand pocket, I would say, for, for this. Actually, before we do that, let's just insert them into the port. So the, the glands right at the back is designed for the battery connectors. You would insert, so on the PCB, a battery plus is for my red battery plus connection to my battery. I would uh, we'll semi-line it up at least and then I would start tightening the, well just semi-tightening the, the gland. Let's first screw that one in. So I want a star screwdriver and tighten this one up. You want the battery connections desperately to be tight. You need them to be tight if there's any, if they're loose or anything like that. If they move around when you do a little wiggle and there we go, tighten again. Very tight, needs to be super tight. That's nice and strong. Uh, very happy with that. And we will move on next through to the battery communications um, between the, the battery and the inver uh, inverter. So for that, we're going to need the, uh, the cable, the CAN cable. So it, it looks like that. It's a standard CAT 5E cable. It's got an RJ45 at the end. I'm gonna go through into the port here. You've got multiple options of ports that you can select from. Um, but we've just chosen this port, whichever suits your layout the best. The reason why we chose that is because it lines up with our trunking the best. So we're going through with that port and we would insert this cable into the first BMS RJ45 that I've spoken about already. And um, the other end of this cable is going into the CAN port into the batteries. And, and that's the, the battery setup. If I turn that on with the um, so that's actually a probably a good idea. So there's two power supplies on this inverter. There's the one from the, the PV and the other one is from the battery. So if I power up this inverter, um, we will well, power up the battery. The inverter should power up. We should get some LEDs and no can failure messages, but I'm not gonna look at that at the moment because we're gonna look at the app a little bit later. Um, but that should start up the inverter. Let's just give it a moment. There we go. We're getting our indicators. There's power. It started up the inverter. And just like before, I'm just going to turn that off so we don't have power to it. And it should discharge very quickly.